Hey everybody, Steven here, and today looking at the Razer Anzu Smart Glasses. And so this product is normally $200, but it was on sale yesterday for $60. Couldn't pass that up. I remember when they launched this, I saw it and I was like, it sounds cool. I like a lot of the features that it has, but also the $200 is just like eh, something that's kind of outside of the price range that I would buy this for. But like I said, $60, too tempting not to actually get because this does have a lot of cool features with it. So let's go ahead and talk about the features. I'm gonna get this thing unboxed, we'll look at it, and then I need to spend some time with it and we'll get a final review. So this has a built-in mic and speakers. For the speakers, these are 16 millimeter drivers. We have touch enabled and voice assistance compatibility with this, low latency audio. This is water resistant IPX4 with this. Um, and then you have more than five hours of battery life that does depend on how you're actually utilizing this. We have the blue light filtering lens. And then with this as well, you actually have the polarized sunglass lenses with this. And this is the large. I think they have two different sizes with this and then you wanna make sure that you get those polarizing lenses. Uh, this also says on the bottom, the microphone is omnidirectional. This weighs 46 grams with this. And then there's more specific things that this actually tells you with the large lens or the lens width, the whatever, bridge width and all those other things that you may wanna look at before you actually purchase this. But I do like the box, good looking box. Let's get this thing pulled out here. And inside we have our two different boxes. I'm assuming the sunglasses are actually inside of this first one. Razer usually nails down their box and their packaging, and this one does look very, very good. See at the bottom here, I'm assuming user manuals with this, and then let's go ahead and get the glasses out first before we look at that other stuff. Peel it out there. There it is. All right, so these are the glasses. Slide that off. Whoa, it's already trying to pair. The second I unfolded it, it's trying to pair. I'll whip out my phone here in a second. So if we're looking at the stems here, these are gonna be obviously thicker. You can see right there, maybe a little bit. I don't know, there it is. So we see the blue button or the light, sorry, where it's trying to actually connect via Bluetooth. I don't know that this said what type of Bluetooth it is, if it's Bluetooth 4.0 or 5.0. I'm assuming it's just gonna be 4.0 because we don't need the 5.0 necessarily with this because you're not gonna, typically your phone's gonna be with you. It's not something that you would want this way far away. Ooh, they do bend out. I like that. I'm not typically a glasses person. I kind of look pretty nerdy right there. I like that. <laughs> so with this uh, inside of the box, I'm assuming the other lenses are going to be potentially in here. Oh no, charging cable. So there's another pouch inside of here. And then we have our charging cable. Looks like we have two spots where we have magnets. This should just connect to the side there. This is a good braiding to it as well. I like that. And then we have just a regular USB with this. So no USB-C or anything. Uh, and actually I can just leave that inside of there. Then this thing, Looks like a letter type thing. Is this our manual? What do we got here? Cleaning cloth, gonna want that. Uh, what is this? See and hear intelligently. That's just a sign kind of thank you thing. And then we have our manual. And I'll need to spend a little bit of time with this. I wonder if it's going to tell me the blue toe tooth. Uh, probably does somewhere in here. Um, it does have touch controls with that and it would be on the right side over here where you could mess with that. Let me pull that whole thing out. All right, got stuff to do. Does it have an app with it? Yeah, there is an audio app that you can do with this. So I'm going to need to actually do that as well. So we have that there. Okay, so this must be the other lenses we have here. Okay, so you can scan this QR code and it'll actually let you know how you're supposed to replace these if you're going to do that. And there are the other lenses, which I'm gonna need to swap these out. So these are fine for, obviously, if I'm going to be utilizing the computer with this, but the big thing for me is I wanna use these as I go on walks by myself and with my family. It's about to be summer, I'm gonna need these. 
Let's see if I can connect this really quick though. There it is, Razer, that Razer Anzu right there at the bottom. Click on that, I'm assuming it'll say something. Bluetooth connected, that audio is right here. All right, so let's play, let's play something with this. Hard part is I don't want to get hit with any YouTube penalties. So let's do Halo Infinite soundtrack. Let's see. Max audio. That is surprisingly louder than I thought it would get. That's crazy. Cause it's <laughs> probably speaking too loud. It's just, it's different than earplugs being in. It's like, it's, you don't have anything just directly there. I guess it's like you don't get the sensation of an earbud, a wireless earbud or headphones or anything like that, but it's still shooting the sound directly right there. That is way better than I thought it was going to be. But again, at $200, it probably should be, right? Let's do some type of other sound. I need to pull these off. And you can, it gets loud when it's at away, but when it's like, cause it's right here. That is just a different sound. Yeah, it's not loud like this, but when it's right next to your ear, it sounds really good. Be curious to see um, what the app allows me to do, if it allows me to change any of the EQ settings or anything like that. Cause if I was, to, if I was to say anything, just the quick test right now, it sounds probably a little flat, right? Probably could use a little bit more bass, but I don't know. That's decent. Yeah, a little bit more flat, right? Um, but yeah, I need to actually spend some more time with this. The look, I mean, because we have the thicker stem, something that you're gonna have to be okay with. I need to spend more time with these, obviously. I like the blue light feature of it, but for me, this is gonna be, I'm gonna be going on walks. And then being able to actually listen to my music where I don't even have to use wireless earbuds now and I can just do this or I could go on and do my phone calls or anything like that. I'm really excited to actually try that stuff out. So what we're going to do now, I need to spend time with this thing. I want to swap out the lenses, spend a couple weeks with it. We're going to come back and I'm going to just talk about my experience overall with these. Thinking about this as a $200 pair of glasses, but I got it for 60, I think one of those things that'll be kind of hard to juggle because I think for 60 bucks, it's such a great deal. I don't even know if they're going to have that sale again either or how long it's going to last with the deal that they're having right now because that is 70% off. That's something I just wasn't expecting. So I, again, I had to hop on it really, really quick for that. So um, I need to spend some more time with it. I'm going to juggle around that notion of how do I judge this as the $200 or the $60 one, just because I don't know that that's ever going to happen again with this. I hope it does so that everybody else could potentially pick this up. But let's go ahead and jump ahead now. I will have spent some time with this thing. We'll get some good B-roll shots as well. So you guys can see this a little bit more up close and what this is going to look like. Um, potentially when you actually have a pair yourself right in front of you, um, I can tell right now just this finish is going to pick up a lot of different fingerprints. And I think this is the only style you can get, I think, is the black, but I haven't really looked into that. But like I said, let's go ahead and jump ahead now, and then we will do the final review for the Razer Anzu Smart Glasses. So I've spent about a month with these glasses now, which is much longer than I had originally planned, but I've been slammed at my main company, and my family ended up getting a stomach flu for over a week. Add to that lots of storms rolling through my area, so it was hard to get outside for walks, or even if I could, it was overcast, which all contributed to me spending more time testing these out. For this section, I'm going to be covering everything one by one in terms of the features and the potential good and bad that comes with each of them. To start, I want to cover the actual lenses, because that's one of the big two things glasses need, which are lenses and of course the frames to put them in. For the two lenses you get, you have the UV light protection and blue light protection. I think they both work really well. I'll start by saying I like the fact that these can swap out, giving you more options for these expensive frames. Swapping these out takes a little bit of pressure, a little bit more than I was actually expecting, but that means they are really snug once they are in the frame. I use the cleaning cloth so I don't accidentally scratch the lenses as well. The UV light lenses are the ones I tend to want to use the most, and these have been great on my walks when the sun is out. 
I think these are going to be a must have during the summer for me when I go outside in general or whether I'm going walking, I'm doing some biking, hiking, a little bit of yard work or to just relax on the back patio with my family in the evenings. The amount this dims the actual sunlight for me is just the perfect amount. I've always had a hard time finding my personal sweet spot when it comes to the few sunglasses I'll wear, but this is definitely it for me. The downside I have noticed here is the holographic foil look I see when looking at my phone, and that can be present towards the outside of the lenses depending on how much sun is actually hitting them. The phone effect can make it difficult to see what's on your phone, so I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, with the video that I'm showcasing, my daughter's on my lap, and you can actually see that kind of purple look that you'll get. It actually shines onto my clothing with this, and it's hard to capture that like it's like a holio foil, like a holographic foil like look to it when you're actually viewing your phone through this. And that's just one of those things. I wasn't actually expecting that. I usually don't get that when it comes to my normal sunglasses. So with this, I don't know if it has to do with the type of protection it's providing, but it's a downside if you're going to be using your phone a lot and using the UV protection lenses with this. Using the blue light filter lenses isn't something I find myself doing much of, but if I know I'll be on the computer for a long time, I will use them. This would be good for someone using their phone a lot and needing the audio as well. I did test these for the blue light filtering function here, and they passed the test with this. I will make sure that video of that pops up, and I like to see that. I did want to test this just in case, though, and I knew people would ask for it. So this is the test, so you can clearly see there is no blue light coming through these lenses. Moving on, the audio here is good. It gets plenty loud, and the way the audio is angled, the noise is projected towards your ears while keeping the audio from blasting out so anyone around you can't really hear it. It's similar to how wireless earbuds sound if someone has them in, and you can hear what they are listening to if you're close enough and depending on how loud they have them. I would say it gets a little louder than that if I'm matching peak noise for a pair of earbuds, but not by much. The audio quality here is decent. I would say it is comparable to some wireless earbuds, but it does sound more flat to me, so I wish it had more bass. Now you can adjust the EQ settings in the app, but that only has three options. Default, Enhanced Quality, and Treble Boost. Default has the best bass, while Enhanced Clarity and Treble Boost just boost treble. Now in terms of how this sounds across different audio profiles on the default audio EQ setting, I would say it's great for podcasts, watching online content such as YouTube videos, TV shows, or movies. It's decent in games, and it does have pretty good spatial sound when it comes to shooters. And last, it's okay for music, but that depends on the type, as it'll sound good for music that doesn't have a lot of bass. But if it does have a lot of bass, this is where it'll begin to sound flat, and the music won't sound as good as it would on other devices. Compared to the other two EQ settings though, as I mentioned earlier, this will actually have the most bass, and to me it sounds the best overall. The other ones I could see if I'm doing a lot of phone calls, I would want that clarity with that, or maybe I'm really just listening to a lot of podcasts. I would have loved to have seen more than just the three options in the app or even the ability to adjust the levels by myself. Like, so you could just go through and kind of map this out how you wanted it to be. The other features you will find in the app are battery levels, gaming mode, which reduces latency, and you can remap the touch buttons. The touch buttons work good and it does make you kind of feel like Tony Stark. I've noticed like other touch based products though, it can be hit or miss for a while while you're actually trying to figure out the area that is going to register the touch. Eventually you're going to figure it out and you'll know the exact zone to press, but in the time it takes you to do that, you're going to have a lot of moments where there's just inconsistency with getting that to register. Calls sound like wireless earbuds also, which the other person can tell that you're on a device because your voice will sound like it's a little bit further from the mic. Uh, kind of like you're talking to someone down a hallway. We usually just refer to this as like a tunnel effect with this. The quality of the audio on your end though is really, really good. It sounds crystal clear. And I would say that's one thing that sounds the best, which is when you're actually talking or you're just doing any voice-based audio with this product. The battery life has been decent. I get a couple walks in, some yard work, and some chill time in the backyard before I need to actually charge them again. At five hours playback time, I think that was a compromise the company had to make in order to actually keep these light, so that's understandable. 
I do wish the charging cables here were a little bit longer or at least locked in a little bit better as this uses magnets and they can knock off easily. Last, the case for these is okay. The glasses fit nicely. It has a spot for the lens cleaning cloth or the extra lenses, and the front has a magnet to keep it shut. I would have loved a hard case with this though, personally. These are too expensive to have a leather case. And with a hard case, I think it just would have provided a lot more protection than the leather soft case can provide, especially considering these are normally $200 glasses and you wanna make sure that if you're gonna spend that type of money that that object is very protected. Of course, you could just buy a hard case if you wanted to. I just would have liked it if it came with it by default. So overall, I'm happy with the Razer Anzu, but that's based on the $60 that I paid for them. If I paid $200 for these, I think I would be let down because it's such a steep price point for what you're getting with these. Now, these are still on sale on Amazon and Razer's website, so I'm wondering if they just didn't sell great, so they are discontinuing them or just trying to get rid of the bulk that they have kind of built up with these. And they even have these right now where you buy one of the chairs, you even get a pair for free. Now, if I paid $200 and was judging them based on that price point, I would say the features here are nice, but they don't justify that price as I would expect more from everything with this product from the sound and call quality to the IPX rating, the battery life, and the case. These really feel more like a $100 to $120 piece of tech to me, which still isn't cheap, but I'd be willing to pay that for these, and it feels like the tech here is on par for that price. I think part of what you're paying for here though is the brand name, stack the material cost on top of that, that has been increasing over the past one to two years, and that could warrant the $200 price tag, but the drama of the new Razer Viper V2 Pro reviews, specifically Random Frank P's review and the live stream about the review and the hate he received over saying it's an overpriced mouse, make me think back to my previous Razer reviews, and I just think part of what you're paying for is the brand name at this point. Don't get me wrong, they make some quality stuff, but when they don't live up to that high expectation consumers have when paying that higher price, I think make it more apparent than if it was at a lower cost. And that's really just my two cents on the whole situation. And with this, I think the you look at other brands, like Apple is gonna be in the same boat with this, right? And you have people that buy their products that are huge fans that are going to defend that brand, even if it is something that the rest of the community that may buy that, doesn't think lives up to that standard that the brand is known for. I think we saw that with the Razer Viper V2 here. I think these glasses kind of fall in that. It's still a decent piece of tech, but at $200, I definitely have a higher expectation considering the brand with this. At $60, I think this is a phenomenal product at $60. And again, I would pay 100, 120, and I still think it would be a great piece of tech at that price point. $200, I'm going to scrutinize this product more and I'm going to want more out of it. But with all that being said, I do wanna mention that they have a round design for these glasses if you don't like the rectangle version. I haven't mentioned that yet, but they do have that. They don't have the option for other colors, but with this, you have the two different options, rectangle or round for the actual lenses and then the frame. Well, that's gonna be it for this one. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section. I'll have a link for these in the description if you wanna pick them up. And the sale seems like it's going to be here for at least a little while longer, but I doubt it will be around forever. So if you do wanna get these, I would advise you to get them sooner than later. If you like the video, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.